Thanks for dropping in. In this video, I failed to open a laptop using the one handed technique. So I used the knee technique instead. I discovered that it doesn't matter if a screen is SD, HD, or Ultra HD if it is broken. And I used my experience and knowledge with computers to prod a fan. On the local FreeCycle group, I recently saw an offer of a load of broken laptops and also PSUs. Although I was initially too late and they had already been offered to someone else, a few days later they got back in touch to say the others were a no-show and I could go and collect them, so off I rushed. So what was in the bag? The first laptop looked pretty complete. It is an Asus K550i and seeing as it wants 120 watts of power, it may be a bit more powerful than I'm used to. On opening it, I can see it does have an AMD FX CPU as well as an RX Gradient graphics card. Nice. However, I can see that the screen is smashed. There is also another Asus, an X52F, which is based on an Intel i3. It ended up being an i3-380M as I removed this off camera. On opening, it looks pretty complete, so I'll need to check this out as well. The third laptop was this HP. Which looks like it has been pretty much stripped. The screen may be usable though. And the fourth laptop was another identical one. Partially stripped, although this does have some RAM, and again the screen may be usable. There were a few loose parts like Wi-Fi cards and a couple of 4GB DDR3 SO DIMMs. And then a lot of the stripped parts from the HPs, like the keyboards and a bag of the other loose bits, including the batteries, a motherboard, screws, etc. For the power supplies, there is this Asus 120W unit, which I therefore assume goes with the first Asus K550i laptop. There are also two of these Delta 65 watt units, 19 volts at 3.4 2 amps. I assume these probably were for the two Beyond Help HPs. However, these will be ideal for powering the HP 260 G1 USFF PCs, a couple of which I still have around. I'll leave a link here to that earlier video. And then there was this smaller HP 45 watt unit. Checking out the Asus K550i first, I'm plugging it in using the 120 watt power adapter. The battery charging light comes on, meaning it is at least receiving power, which is a good start. On power on, it does post. But as already suspected, the screen is history. Also, the fan is very noisy. So both of these will need looking at. However, when it is plugged into an external monitor, it does post, so there is hope. Going into the BIOS, I can see it has an AMD FX 9830P quad-core APU, which also has an R7 Class I GPU. Hopefully there will be a discrete RX Radeon as well. There's also eight gigabytes of RAM installed, nice, as well as a 128 gigabyte SSD. However, on opening the back, after removing the battery, there is a space for a 2.5 inch SSD that is empty and a single SO DDR4 DIMM slot that is also empty. It is likely therefore that the 8GB RAM is soldered on and the SSD will need a deeper dive to get to. On trying the second laptop, the Asus X52F, we had no such luck. It was as dead as a very dead thing. On opening, we did get 2x2GB DDR3 RAM though, as well as the i3-380M CPU. So not a total loss. I was also hopeful that one of the screens, either from this X52F or from the HPs, would be a suitable replacement for the broken one on the K550i. However, I was going to be out of luck here. Although all the screens were the same size, 15.6 inches, the K550i 
uses a 30-pin connector, while all the other screens use 40-pin connectors. From my understanding, laptop manufacturers haven't really agreed on a standard yet, although these 30 and 40-pin solutions seem to be the most common. I therefore had to put this on hold until I found a suitable replacement screen, which I managed to do on eBay for a whopping £4.69p, including delivery. Bargain. So a few days later, once the replacement screen had arrived, I set to repairing it. First off, the screw covers just pop out and a small positive screwdriver is needed to remove the two screws. The surround can then be unclipped and removed. A spudger may be useful to do this. Personally, I went for the breaking my fingernails option. There are four screws which need to be removed, two on the top edge and two on the bottom edge by each corner. There was then some tape that needed to be unstuck, after which the screen can just fall forward, revealing where the lead is connected, at the back. The connector is covered by some tape, so once unstuck, the connector can be removed. There are no clips or release mechanisms, but care does need to be taken as the board the connector is attached to on the screen is quite fragile. The screen can then be removed and the new one put in its place. It is then a case of doing everything in reverse. The connector is fitted and the tape restuck down. The screen can then be lifted back into place where there are holes in the screen by the screws which, which fit over pegs on the laptop to position it correctly. Then the four screws can be replaced. I then get to do a new peel on an old laptop, which is a nice added bonus. After which the surround can be replaced by clicking it back in. And then the two remaining screws can be put back in. And then the little sticky covers can be replaced if you still have them and they're not stuck to your sock like they were in my case. So, moment of truth, do we get a display? Yes, goody good. We do still have the horrific fan noise though, so that is next on the agenda. To get into the laptop, I first removed the battery and then the two screws to open up the SSD and RAM expansion bay. There are then five screws to remove from under this cover area. Followed by a further four from around the battery area. Turning the laptop back over, the entire top section including the keyboard, trackpad and surround can then be prized away from the bottom part, taking care as they will still be connected to the bottom section with leads. Again, a spudger would be useful here, or broken fingernails. Not recommended would be using a screwdriver of course. Meh. Once in, the power switch, trackpad and keyboard leads all need undoing and they all have a clip that needs releasing to do this. Once done, the top section can be removed. Once in, we can see where the internal SSD is placed, which is a 2.5 inch drive. And after prodding and poking the fan, it seemed to be spinning fine, with nothing in the way of it. And with no easy obvious way to remove it, I resorted to the tried and tested IT method of hoping that taking something apart and putting it back together again solves the issue. So I replaced the top section, replaced the leads,
but before doing all the screws up, I figured I'd see if Method Rebuild was successful in fixing the fan. Yes, it was. Great. I then replaced the screws and there you go. I subsequently removed the internal SSD and replaced it with a 240 gigabyte SSD in the expansion bay as I will only ever run one SSD and it will be way easier to mess around with it in the expansion bay than having to open it up each time in the future. I also added an additional 8 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM that I had lying around, taking it to 16 gigabytes, which will firstly make it dual channel so hopefully improve performance, as well as allowing some to be used as video RAM without having a major knock-on on the, to the system RAM. I installed Windows 10, which was auto-activated, and it turned out to have a Radeon RX 560M, which was a nice added bonus. So a low-spec gaming laptop for £4.69 and some spare parts. Does anyone have this or a similar spec laptop? What are you able to run on it game-wise, as I've not tried much yet? If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and leave a comment below. Take care. And I'll see you again soon.